musicians spend hours cooped up in buses and drab hotel rooms, swatting away obnoxious fans, all while missing their loved ones at home. And to cope with the trauma, some stars decompress by smashing up their hotel rooms, performing blacked out drunk, fighting with bandmates, writing ridiculously entitled requests into their riders, and becoming holy terrors while performing on the road. Want to find out what Ozzy was snorting with who? Which band got their teeth knocked out by German police? And just how hard Madonna and Mariah can out-diva the other? Here are the musicians everyone hates working with on tour. Hit it! Axl Rose According to Rolling Stone, legendary hard rock band Guns N' Roses are notoriously ill-behaved on tour, particularly lead shrieker Axl Rose. On one tour, for instance, Rose holed himself up in a Japanese hotel room and wouldn't speak to anyone for days. And during a North American tour, Rose was a no-show at a Philadelphia concert in 2002. The rumor was he'd stayed in New York to watch a Knicks game, so furious fans rioted. It wasn't his first offense. During a St. Louis show in 91, Rose reportedly became angry that someone was taking unauthorized photos in the front row, so he stage-dived to beat the guy down, then stormed off, sparking a riot and a lifetime ban in St. Louis. Well, thanks to the lame-ass security, I'm going home. During an Atlanta show in 87, Rose punched a security guard in the face. And that same year, when a businessman in a Chicago hotel told Rose he was a John Bon Jovi lookalike, he punched that dude too. Ozzy Osbourne According to Complex, Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee claims that after a night of drinking and snorting cocaine with Ozzy Osbourne during an 84 tour, Osbourne noticed a steady stream of ants gathered outside the tour bus, fell to the ground and snorted the ants up his nose through a straw. That wasn't his first close encounter with the Animal Kingdom, of course. The New York Post reported Osborne instantly entered the annals of rock lore during an 82 concert in Iowa. A fan reportedly threw a live bat onto the stage and Osborne, thinking it was a rubber toy, immediately bit off its head. Osborne spent the remainder of his tour getting a whole bunch of rabies shots. Madonna in 1991's Truth or Dare, Madonna helped her dancers through their troubles, establishing herself as patron saint of the disenfranchised. But that may have all been for the cameras. The New York Post reported that Madonna abandoned most of those dancers once the tour wrapped. A source said Madonna can be quite difficult with her crew, claiming, If she feels that they are no longer appreciating her, she can turn nasty. If she doesn't fire them, she's been known to freeze them out. Another source told Radar Online that Madonna is majorly difficult behind the scenes, claiming she worked her dancers way too hard during her 2015 Rebel Heart tour, saying, One dancer even went so far as to take off his credentials, throw it in her face and say, F*** you, I quit. This source also claimed that according to Madonna, Everyone is required to wear black head to toe at all times, and she has said in her own words that there are no fat allowed in her presence. She even shot a short film featuring her dancers as prisoners, telling Vice, and Then I decided to make some of the dancers prisoners that were being treated like terrorists and beaten for no reason and tortured for mm -hmm. no reason. Mariah Carey she excels at all manner of divadom, but Mariah Carey reportedly really pours her heart and soul into concocting her tour riders. Leslie, you booked me in a hostel. If it's any consolation, you look great. I need a beautifully appointed private room in a hotel. According to The Smoking Gun, Carey formally demanded to be served Cristal champagne with bendy straws, but has since switched the request to a $200 bottle of Cabernet. According to the rider, Carrie's dressing room requires two dozen white roses and vanilla candles and should also be temperature controlled to about 75 degrees. Perhaps Carrie should pour some of this creative energy into her live show, as evidenced by her underwhelming Las Vegas residency. According to The Mirror, fans were particularly upset when Carrie whistled her way through a July 2017 concert. Van Halen 
According to Rolling Stone, Van Halen's on-again, off-again lead singer David Lee Roth really brought the drunken dysfunction to the 1983 US Festival. As Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak recalled in his memoir, Was Computer Geek to Cult Icon. Roth was practically falling down on stage. He was so drunk, slurring and forgetting lyrics and everything. You have to either love us and hate him or vice versa. If we have to have a comparison, then fine, I eat you for breakfast, pal. But according to Ultimate Classic Rock, guitarist Eddie Van Halen was equally out of it throughout much of the band's disastrous 2004 reunion tour. Offstage, he'd reportedly gulp wine from the bottle, was frighteningly skinny, and collapsed several times backstage. Plus, the infighting between bandmates was so bad, everybody flew in different jets, according to occasional lead singer Sammy Hagar. Then there was the band's notorious 1982 contract rider, which, according to Snopes, requested M&Ms. Warning, absolutely no brown ones. But it wasn't just a fanciful ask. It was a fail-safe provision to ensure their highly detailed contract was being read. Roth wrote in his biography, When I would walk backstage, if I saw a brown M&M in that bowl, well, line check the entire production. Guaranteed you're going to arrive at a technical error. They didn't read the contract. Oasis Oftentimes, drama between bandmates seems trumped up for the sake of gossip, but the sibling rivalry between Oasis's Noel and Liam Gallagher appears to be informed by genuine bad feelings. As Rolling Stone reported, the bad blood was flowing as early as 1994, the year they released their debut, Definitely Maybe. The mag claims Crystal Meth was to blame for a miserable show at LA's fabled Whiskey A Go Go, where Liam smashed Noel with a tambourine and barged off stage before the performance was over. Horrible drug. I don't know who f***ing got it, but it was there, and we all thought it was coke. <laughs> we were doing big f***ing lines of it. Other touring fiascos include Oasis cancelling the remainder of another US tour in 96 due to, quote, internal difficulties, and Liam getting two teeth knocked out after a drunken brawl with German police in 2002. Unwilling to leave any rock star cliché unturned, Oasis also reportedly trashed a room at the Columbia Hotel in 1994. Regarding that snafu, Noel quipped, those plate glass windows were just saying, throw a chair through me.